The Dallas Theater Center uh, is unique in that it is one of the few companies outside of the triumvirate of New York, Chicago, and Seattle to be renowned as an innovative uh, company. Uh, now that has to do with the leadership's ambitions, but it also weirdly had to do with their home for the last 40 years. For 40 years, they performed right across the street where the Opera House is now, in something called the Arts District Theater. The Arts District Theater was a terrible little building, literally a shed. Uh, in fact, it was nicknamed The Shed. Now, The Shed, weirdly, gave that company certain flexibilities uh, that simply no other company in the United States could afford. For example, at one point, Richard Hamburger wanted to do a cherry orchard, and he wanted actors to literally come out of a real well in the middle of the stage. So they brought a backhoe in and dug a 30-foot hole right through the center of the stage, and nobody cared. Well, that's the kind of freedoms that that building allowed that company that, in fact, made them exciting and allowed them to get some of the best artistic directors, scenic designers, and actors from across the United States to come here and perform. That was the first thing that was unique about that building. The second is that it was just a big empty space, which meant that it allowed them to be multi-form. What that means is that on any given night, they would either be in proscenium, thrust, flat floor, traverse, arena, or any other configuration that they could imagine. All it depended upon was labor and the operational budget to pay for it. Well, as labor got more and more expensive over the 40 years they were in that building, eventually that freedom began to wane. And at some point, they actually fixed the stage into one single configuration. So when we started the project, we were actually put in an unusual situation. We were being asked to do a brand new, pristine building that threatened to actually kill the qualities that the old building had that allowed this company to actually become a notorious company. So in fact, we'd do a new building, capital A architecture, and the company's notoriety would go down. So we agreed with the client to do two things. First is the building somehow had to maintain the same kinds of freedoms of the old building. And second, it had to be multi-form without requiring additional operational cost. We call it push of a button, but what it really meant was a few stage hands in about three or four hours for the work. And that was how we began the project. Now, in order to achieve that, we did something that we called dumb. And I say that in the best sense of the word. For us, dumb is not a pejorative term. It was to take what is this is front of house, back of house in your auditorium. Take front of house and define it as below house. And take back of house and define it as above house. Now that gave us three things. The first is it allowed us to take all the freedoms that you normally expect with a fly tower and kind of spread them evenly between stage and auditorium. In fact, not to make any distinction. Fly even the presenting. Okay, so that in fact, underneath this floating box, you can conceive of any kind of theater organization. Second, because we were able to fly things like the balconies and the presidium, we were able to put underfloor technology to allow the orchestra to convert between flat floor, arena, and uh, presidium. It also meant that we could use a material, if you look at the material throughout the building and all the performance spaces, it's something called polyboard. Polyboard is a very inexpensive material. It's made out of recycled baby diapers. Uh, it's a very green material. It happens to cut just like MPPF. So in fact, they can drill, nail, screw, paint, cut, stitch this material at will and replace it at a very minimum cost. So now we've actually created with them a theater machine that allows them, without requiring a lot of operational budget, to move between the three cargo configurations, as well as any other configuration the artistic director might conceive of, as well as an auditorium that is very, very malleable in terms of scenic alteration. But we got a third advantage. And that's that by uh, stacking the building, we were able to actually open up the perimeter of the auditorium, which is a very unique thing. And historically, uh, in order to meet the uh, acoustic requirements in terms of keeping sound out, the light requirements, auditoriums are usually built behind two feet of concrete. Well, technology is advanced enough now that we can actually create a very, very, very high, very, very secure acoustic enclosure using glass. So in fact, now the artistic director is given license to control the suspension of disbelief. When we tour different theaters with the client at the beginning of the project, one of the things that the artistic director said almost every time is, by the way, we hate you architects. And then when we pushed them further, they said, you know, the first five minutes of every performance, we have to remove you from the minds of our patrons. We lose five minutes per performance, getting the architecture out of the head of the audience. So with actually the ability not only to control daylight, so in fact the artistic director has the ability, if they want 
the parable of Macbeth, the last act, to be applied to your daily life, they can actually lift the blinds without allowing the sounds of Dallas to invade. But they also have the ability in one quarter of the building to allow uh, patrons or the uh, performers either go from the inside out or the outside in. And that now allows the artistic director, in fact, to control the procession. They can use our lobby and our sequence, but they can also have people come in from the outside directly in at the first act or go out and intermission. So in that respect, with the client, my ambition ultimately was to create what we would call a theater machine that effectively, to the extent possible, removed the hand of the architect and supplanted it with the hand of the artistic director at any point possible. And that is what we sell ultimately as the artistic challenge of project. That's my super fast five minutes. <laughs>